Resume recording. We're up. Welcome everybody that has joined us today for this webinar. Uh, I'm going to immediately start by sharing my screen. Uh, you should be able to see um, myself uh, and Peter as presenters in a window uh, as well. But as you can see, this is a webinar on e-commerce challenges that are happening right now in the year 2022. And specifically today, we're gonna to focus on customer experience and online reviews. This is one in a series of webinars that I'm doing on e-commerce challenges this year. And for each one, I am hosting it with a colleague of mine. Uh, today, uh, that colleague is Peter, Brise Peter Brissett. And most webinars start out and people sit there and they show you pictures of their family and cars that they drive or that they think they shouldn't be driving, their house. Uh, and then they come up with some stupid picture of uh, an embarrassing moment in their life to show you that they're just like you after showing you all of this expensive stuff. We're not gonna do any of that today. Uh, I'm not gonna waste the first 10 or 15 minutes going through that kind of stuff that you really don't care about. Instead, I'm gonna let you know a little bit about me and when it's Peter's turn to talk, he'll let you know a little bit about him. But basically you can see, if you don't know me, uh, there are some people on here who I know very well. There's some other people who I'm, I've not met yet. Uh, my name is Greg Jamison. I have won multiple awards, including Colorado Small Business of the Year, been listed on the Inc. 500, named International Developer of the Year. Um, more importantly, I have developed literally hundreds and hundreds of websites for people because I have been in this business of uh, creating e-commerce applications since the very beginning of the internet. As I said, my colleague that is my co-host today is Peter Brissett. And oftentimes when people hold webinars, they say, here's my colleague, he's also my friend and so forth. And they aren't really your friend, they're just there because they are uh, someone that you met and are an acquaintance. The reality for me is that Peter and I actually are friends. This was at a party at my house that Peter's been to. Uh, we go skiing together. Uh, we actually do hang out together. Good story. So the coronavirus has really impacted e-commerce. And as you can see, basically, uh, back at the beginning of 2020, we essentially jumped 10 years forward in about a 90 day time frame, and that has not let up. We are now uh, 10 years ahead of where people were expecting us to be uh, with e-commerce uh, prior to the pandemic. So this is a fantastic time to be in the e-commerce business and selling things online. Before we go any further, I've got a quick pop quiz. I'm gonna show you two product listings. And if you would, in the chat area, tell me which one you think is going to sell more. Uh, number one here or number two. And here are both of them side by side. So just put in the chat area, which one you think is going to sell more, number one or number two, and also say why you think that is the case. All right, I'm not looking at the chat area on Facebook live stream. So if people are putting things in there, you may want to jump over to the uh, Zoom presentation because that's where I'm going to be looking at chat comments. But by and large, people are saying number two. And there's a couple of reasons for this, obviously. One is uh, you can see up here that it's got a whole bunch of reviews uh, averaging four and a half stars. 
people like to buy products that have uh, four and five star reviews. They might read about the one star reviews because everybody makes a mistake now and then, but uh, people like to buy products that have four and five star reviews. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of images here, not just a single product image. Uh, and it's got a video. Video is huge with the customer experience and whether or not you're actually going to buy a product. And it's got a long description here so you can actually see what it is that you are buying. So lots of different reasons why number two is the winner. So that's what we're gonna talk about today is the importance of the customer experience. Uh, we'll talk a little bit as it relates to that about competition and competitor analysis. Then I'm gonna show you how you can actually make this happen for your business. And Peter will talk about reputation management and online reviews. So the first question is really, what is customer experience design? And it is the process of defining the personas and user stories, and then translating that into what users want uh, by creating the design features that actually drive action. Now, the importance of sex. Sex appeal is great, right? CEX. Uh, and you can see here that I've got a picture of a beautiful young actress. Uh, this happens to be Jessica Alba. And Jessica, uh, when she became a mom, she decided that she wanted to start selling baby products online. Now, given who she was, a famous actress, she probably could have just rested on her laurels, but she didn't do that. And she started a company that she called The Honest Company that had a pledge to create safe and sustainable products that were healthy alternatives for both uh, the mother and the baby. So this uh, is kind of uh, some of the reasonings behind Jessica's company. And you can see what the purpose is and how uh, they actually have created a list of 2,500 chemicals and materials that they will not use in their products because of the pledge that they created uh, with uh, safety and environmental concerns and so forth. But one of the things that Jessica's company does that is really important is that she has a blog that is actually one of the best e-commerce blogs that I've seen. Uh, it really helps mothers and young women. Uh, you can see she's got some products on there about mascara and stuff too. Uh, but the blog is really a helpful tool that creates all kinds of information and establishes a relationship with the customer. Now, sure, uh, there are some links in the blog, which there should be uh, as a marketing tool that points back to a specific product that she's selling on her website. But as you can see in the post on the right here, it's got a lot of content and providing this long form content is a really, significant factor in the user experience. So here's a quote by uh, Shep Hyken, where you can see the products between many online merchants are similar or at least perceived to be similar by the customer. The big difference between merchants typically comes down to customer experience. The e-commerce merchant who creates the best experience for the customer wins. And my friend Peter Brissett has a quote saying, the best way to overcome a negative review is to never get one. Uh, he's gonna talk about that more in his portion of this presentation. But the same thing is true with the customer experience. When you provide a positive customer experience, you don't need to worry about handling uh, complaints or about negative customer support. Starting about the time that e-commerce here really took off in 2020, uh, one of the things that happened is that the customer experience actually overtook price and product as the key in brand differentiation. 
86% of buyers are actually willing to pay more for a better customer experience. So how do you go about creating an unforgettable customer experience? Well, there's a number of factors that play into this. Uh, personalization, details, speed and security, interaction, information, and the ease of checkout, including payment methods and shipping. Uh, you know, free shipping is obviously great, but certainly having shipping where it's not an unexpected negative surprise at the end of, oh, I'm buying this product for 10 bucks. And by the way, shipping's only 25 bucks. Uh, you don't wanna have those types of things happen. So let's talk a little bit about each of these. The first of which is personalization. And this is a video that I actually had someone send to me a couple of weeks ago. And I just wanna play it for you here because uh, this really caught my attention and you're gonna see why. Hey Greg, Chris Ford here. Now what I'm about to say, I think it's a lot of retail because I would describe myself as podcast junkie. When I found, it, found your show, I think I ate up like three or four episodes. And before I said, all right, Chris, you need to move on with your day. Um, I just found it was sort of like, I don't even know how to, I felt like I was in a library with just knowledge all around me and the texture of that room. That's how the, the interviews just sort of navigate. And, and there is just such a, a breath to the learning that you guide us through. And as I said in my five-star review, time well spent. So I, as I was listening to your show, I thought you and I could have a meaty conversation that would be of great value to your audience. Check out my backstory below because people tell me all the time there's a lot more depth and scope to this than they originally understood. And I just would love to connect with you. And again, big fan. So you can see why it caught my attention, right? Uh, it was a video that was personalized to me. She's holding up this sign and she's using my name and she's uh, telling me uh, how much she appreciates what I'm doing and so forth. That type of personalization is absolutely huge when it comes to uh, interacting with your people online. Uh, assuming that you have a WordPress website, there is a fantastic plug out plugin out there called if so content personalization and you can see on here all of the different kinds of things that you can do to actually personalize the experience of somebody on your website you can do this even if it's not an e-commerce website uh, based upon where somebody is you can show them different content based upon the date or the time of the day uh, based upon pages that they've already visited on your website uh, based upon now, whether they're logged in or not, based upon uh, the device they're using. You can show them different content on a phone than you can show them uh, on a laptop. And items in their cart, uh, if it is an e-commerce website, you can show them different uh, suggestions and so forth. So lots of different ways that you can actually personalize content. If they are logged in, you can say, hey, Peter, check out... Uh, these products that I think you might also like. So that is a huge factor in the customer experience. Now, about a month ago, I was at Disneyland and my wife being a Disney freak insisted that we get there before the park open and that we be first in line. Uh, so we did that uh, because we wanted to go to the new Star Wars Rise of the Resistance ride. And we're standing there in line and I looked back over my shoulder and this is what I saw. This was all the people standing in line to get into the new Star Wars ride. And I was just like, this is unbelievable. What is it about Disney that people will stand in line for hours and hours just to go on a ride that only lasts for, you know, five, six, seven minutes. And as I was pondering that, the answer became pretty clear. It's the experience. People like the experience that Disney offers. Now, obviously, as you go through this new Star Wars land, it makes you feel like you are in Star Wars. They 
really have the experience nailed down. But it's not just the macro thing that you see here. It's actually every little detail, even the refreshment stands look like it came right out of Star Wars. So details matter. And whatever you're doing uh, on your website, make sure that you pay attention to the details. Jeff Bezos has a great quote that says, we see our customers as invited guests to our party and we are the host. It's our job every day to make every important aspect of the customer experience a little bit better. In other words, they're paying attention to the details. And the result of this is that Amazon has the number one reputation, even above companies like Apple and Walt Disney uh, for building a great customer experience. Let me show you a quick video here on what Jeff Bezos has to say about this himself. A lot has happened over the last 15 years. As I said, we've made a lot of mistakes. We've learned some things. Uh, and I wanna tell you uh, everything I know. I can guarantee you everything I know, it's a very short list. This won't take long. Um, and it pretty, it, it's complete too. Um, all right, well, the first thing I know is that you need to obsess over customers. Uh, I can tell you that we have been doing this from the very beginning, and it's the only reason that Amazon.com exists today in any form. Uh, we've always put customers first. When given the choice of obsessing over competitors or obsessing over customers, we always obsess over customers. We pay attention to what our competitors do, but it's not where we put our energy. It's not where we get our motivation from. We really like to uh, uh, start with customers and work backwards. And again, that is the key thing uh, that I know. And it covers a lot of other mistakes. If you're truly obsessed over customers, it'll cover a lot of errors. So Amazon has set the bar uh, that we all have to adhere to. Uh, when we're selling stuff online, uh, even if it's selling our services and we're uh, not taking payment online, uh, but we're making appointments, whatever, Amazon has set that bar and we all have to adhere to that bar because that's the level that customers expect today. So just a quick comic here about... Uh, really the level of uh, intimacy that you should have with your customers. Now, I wanna tell you a quick story here about a uh, person that I know that was actually selling, a, selling used cowboy hats online. Now, you can go buy a new cowboy hat, you know, even a good quality 7X hat for a couple hundred bucks at the most, right? But uh, this guy is a cowboy up in Wyoming, and each year he would go out and he would buy himself a new hat, and he would sell his old hat on eBay. Well, what he would do is he would tell about the experiences that he had while wearing that hat. He wouldn't just say, hey, you know, here's a, a used cowboy hat that happens to have some stains and holes in it. Uh, he would write a story that would say, you know, I was crossing the river one day trying to chase this cow. And all of a sudden there was this bear that was on the other side of the, the river and he reared up and the cow ran off and my horse bucked and threw me off in the river. And that's how I got this one hole in the hat. And he went on and on about uh, the experiences he had wearing his hat. Well, the result of that was he would sell these used cowboy hats for many, many times what he had paid for a brand new hat. Uh, that's the type of thing that you need to do when you're talking about your products and services is really appeal to your customers' senses and emotions. Some companies have done a fantastic job of this. Uh, you can see up here, I've got a Tesla uh, in this picture. Tesla claims that they are green energy efficient cars and they have built up a loyal brand following because of that. 
Now, the reality is, is that we all know that electricity comes from coal and coal is nothing but clean. Uh, the batteries, when they wear out, are toxic batteries that we have to dispose of. Teslas are not a environmentally friendly option whatsoever, but they've built up a brand loyalty uh, based upon this reputation. The same thing with Apple. People love Apple products. Uh, from a technical standpoint, Apple isn't any better than any other computer, and an iPhone isn't any better than uh, an Android. Uh, there's going to be some people on this uh, webinar that are going to violently disagree with me in making that statement because of the fact that Apple has this incredible reputation and they've built up uh, trust and loyalty to the point where people evangelize their products. Uh, the real uh, test of this, I guess, is Harley Davidson's motorcycles where so many people will actually tattoo their bodies with their logo. So that's what you want to do with your online business is to build up this kind of trust and loyalty. Now, when it comes to your product pages, you want to build great product pages. Uh, you want to have great images. We saw that little pop quiz at the beginning. You want to have videos. You want to uh, have your five-star reviews. Uh, but when it comes to descriptions, as we saw with the cowboy hat, as we saw uh, with that pop quiz and so forth too, as a general rule, when it comes to product descriptions, more is better. Uh, in fact, 67% of consumers who have visited an online store with the intent of making a purchase left the site because the retailer did not provide enough information about the product to make a buying decision. You can see here is an example of what I've seen in so many online stores. Somebody puts up a picture of the product. In this case, it's even a little bit of a fuzzy picture, but they just say, here's an American berry jam. Uh, the price is $6.50. Why would anybody want to buy that? Unless they had already tasted it and they already knew what they wanted, the likelihood of you getting a new customer from that type of a product page is very small. Instead, if you'll notice here, this is actually one of my customers, uh, Colorado Mountain Jam, uh, and he's got an organic blueberry jam. This happens to be listed on Amazon. It's also on his website very similar thing, but you can see that one, not only is the image better, but the product description, which I'll zoom up on here, shows you exactly why you would want to buy his product. Uh, tells you how you can use it, tells you a little bit about the history of blueberries and what the taste is like and so forth. This is what you want to do with a good uh, product description on your website. Another great way to enhance customer experience for somebody is to create 360 degree videos. Imagine if you would, uh, somebody uh, that has a physical store and they're walking through the store and are able to interact with the store. Uh, I've got this little 360 degree camera that I'm holding up here that you can see. Uh, has lenses on both sides that allows you to record a 360 degree video. Uh, so it looks like this. 360 degree videos are supported on both Facebook and YouTube. And here's an example of what one of these 360 degree videos look like. So let's just go ahead and watch this. And as somebody goes into the store here, you can see that my mouse, I'm controlling this with my mouse. I can look up at the ceiling. I can look around in the store. Uh, frequently there are hot spots in these, so you can zo zoom into some other portion of the site. Uh, this is really what a 360 degree video will do. I've put some of these on some of my clients' websites 
and you can see that actually with the hotspots, you could actually uh, have it go to a product page at that point. Now, if you have virtual reality glasses, uh, you can take these 360 degree videos and they will offset the pictures just a little bit. You can see the left and right image frame here is a little bit offset. So it will create a, uh, a 3D view of what it's like to actually be inside of that particular building. Another thing that you can do with improving the customer experience is to put a chat bot on your website. Uh, this is an example of a chat bot that I've got on my website. And you can see that uh, basically this uses artificial intelligence to interact with your visitors on the website when they have questions. So you don't have to be monitoring your website for doing a live chat. You can go in there and you can program a chat bot that will answer the bulk of the questions that you usually get over and over again. So let's look here real quickly at competition competitor analysis. You heard Jeff Bezos say that, yeah, we, we pay attention to our competitors. We just don't uh, use that as our focus. Our focus is on the customer experience, but obviously we have to pay attention to what our competitors are doing as well. Well, what I'm gonna do here is present a hypothetical case for you, but it's similar to a case that I actually hear frequently from people when they contact me. Uh, and in this case, someone's saying, I sell swing line staplers in my store and I want to rank higher than swing line staplers uh, and get listed on the first page of Google to rank higher than swing line uh, so that people will buy swing line staplers for me instead of uh, from swing line themselves. And my question always is, why would somebody do that in the first place? Why would they buy from you instead of buying from the manufacturer? And the answer has to be that customer experience. You have to provide a better customer experience than the manufacturer is. So if we look here at swing lines, uh, staplers, the next thing that I'm going to say is that uh, swing line is going to be really hard to beat on the first page of Google. Let's take a look at your backlinks to your website and your stats. This is a pretty common website. You can see there's 414 backlinks to this website from 97 domains with a domain strength of 2.96. So just to give you an idea of comparison, this is my website. I've got 158,000 backlinks to my website with a much higher domain strength. I work really hard at this, but the fact is, is you can't compare your site to me for this particular example. What you have to do is you have to compare it to Swingline. So let's take a look at Swingline. And you can see that they've got almost 33,000 backlinks to their website from 1,100 different domains. You're not going to beat Swingline. Essentially, you know, in simple terms, Google considers a hyperlink to be a vote of confidence from one internet to a site to another. And the more of these votes of confidence you have, the higher up you're going to appear in the search engines. Now, you also have to compete in the case of Swingline Staples with places like Office Depot, which has got 6 million backlinks and a huge domain strength. So this is gonna be a real uphill battle for you. But let's look at an option here. If we pick a specific make and model of the swing line staplers, in this case, the next series WOW desktop stapler, you can see that there are some other companies that are in fact starting to appear on page one for that long tail keyword of the specific model number. One of these is perfectoutput.com. If we look at their stats, perfectoutput.com has got 246 backlinks uh, with the domain strength of 
you can beat these guys. And the way to do that is you're going to do it for that long tail keyword for a specific model number of the stapler. And you're going to do it with a YouTube video. YouTube is owned by Google and links from YouTube back to your website actually count more than links from other websites. I've done this for other companies. You can see here, do a search for Pakistan baskets. And uh, this video right here is from one of my clients from 12 years ago. And that video is still appearing on the first page of the blended Google results. Here's another one that I just did uh, recently for a house cleaner in Green Valley Ranch. And their video is appearing on the very first page of Google. So when you have these long tail keywords and you optimize the videos on YouTube, this is a great way for you to start to appear on the first page of the Google results. Now, how are you going to make all this happen? I've talked about a lot of different things here today with your customer experience, personalizing things, uh, creating uh, better product descriptions, you know, putting videos on your site. Uh, how are you going to make all this happen? Well, I have a program that I run that I call the Four P's Coaching Program. And in there, we cover the platform, the product, the page views, or traffic to your website and purchases or sales conversions. The results that I've gotten for some of my customers, you can see here's a customer that actually just started back in April and uh, they're now doing about $50,000 a month in sales. Uh, this customer has been around for a little bit longer uh, for, uh, few years, but they are still one of my uh, clients and they're now doing about $150,000 in sales. What some other people are saying about uh, my coaching programs. Uh, you guys can read these. I don't have to read them to you, but on a scale of one to 10, I'd rate Greg a 15. Uh, answer almost any question that you can throw at me. So my question then is, you know, if you look at done for you services, if I was to do these things for you, or you were to hire somebody to do it, how much would a website cost in 2022? And you can see that on average, the cost to build the website, which includes launching it and designing it, is $12,000 to $150,000. This is obviously for an e-commerce website. And Routine maintenance ranges from $35 to $5,000 a month. Uh, a digital marketer, you're gonna add another $2,500 to $12,000 a month or $50 to $500 an hour. Uh, social media management, add in another thousand to $20,000 a month. Uh, so SEO services, this is going to cost you $100 to $250 an hour. Basically, your cost to run an online business when you get done looking at this is going to be like $7,000 a month on the low end, uh, to, which is like $85,000 a year. Or on the high end, uh, you're running a full-blown e-commerce business and you're uh, paying somebody uh, for digital marketing and social media and SEO and security and so forth, you're looking at like $57,000 a month to run your business, which is actually not all that unexpected. Uh, a few years ago, I had a company, I had uh, 25 employees and uh, I can tell you that my monthly total was a whole lot higher than $57,000. Uh, if you go out and you hire a webmaster, even an entry-level webmaster, you're looking at somebody paying somebody like $57,000 a year. A digital marketing person, like $71,000 a year for an entry-level person. I'm gonna teach you how you can save all that money. You don't have to spend all that money. But before I show you how you can do that, 
I want to tell you a, another quick story, and then I'll wrap up and give Peter a shot here. But this is a story about my neighbor gal. She was my pet sitter. And every time I would go on a trip, I'd call her up and say, hey, Brooke, can you come over and watch our cats and uh, feed my fish and so forth? And, uh, the last time that I called her, she was like, yeah, I'll come over, but I need to talk to you. And so she came over and she said, this is going to be the last time I can watch your pets. Uh, and I'm like, well, why? And she's like, because I'm now a TikTok influencer. And I kind of laughed and I was like, yeah, you know, here's this uh, teenage girl that's uh, saying she's a TikTok influencer and she obviously, you know, just wants to be spending more time uh, on the computer or whatever. And so I was like, well, how many uh, followers do you have? 12 million. I about fell on the floor. I didn't know what to say. And I let this opportunity pass me by. What I should have said was, you know, Brooke, forget about the cats. I need to hire you right now to be my coach to show me how to do this. Uh, I looked her up uh, after that just a couple months ago, and she now has 20 million followers on TikTok. Uh, she paid cash for a house. She's 18 years old, and she went out and paid cash for a house. She has more influencers on TikTok than Kim Kardashian does. I let the opportunity of a lifetime passed me by by not saying, I need you to be my coach. I don't want that to happen to you guys. So I am making you an offer here today on how you can save all that money that I just showed you of what it was going to cost to truly run an online business. Uh, basically, I'm going to let you have a free strategy session with me. Uh, you can go to my website, webstoresltd.com forward slash strategy. Uh, and for the first uh, 15 people that take me up on this, you're going to get a free strategy session. Uh, this is not a sales pitch. This is an opportunity to talk about you and your business. When you do this, I am also going to include a copy, a digital copy of Peter Brissett's Overcoming Negative Online Review ebook. So uh, I really encourage you to do that. Go in there, schedule a strategy call with me. I'll put the link again in the chat box, chat area. And with that, I want to turn the stage over to my friend, Peter Brissett. Greg, thanks so much. I did get a comment. Someone said that the chat, maybe the Q&A is working, but not the chat. Maybe it wasn't turned on. I don't know why that would be the case, but uh, I'm going to put that link in the chat and we'll see if people can, in fact, see it. Let's find out. Uh, Greg, thanks so much. I uh, appreciate that. That was some amazing information. Uh, everyone that's on this call, um, I noticed some of you that are on there, some of my clients, schedule a strategy session with Greg, ask him questions, uh, going to be well worth your time, I promise you. Uh, he just mentioned uh, my, uh, my ebook. Uh, overcoming negative online reviews. So I, I first published that way back in uh, 2010, so 10 years ago. So I've been talking about this and working on this for quite a long time now. So I like to reference uh, reviews as review marketing versus reputation management. Why the difference? Why the distinction? Well, Reputation management talks about a lot of different things about, uh, you know, how you're showing up online and that's important to monitor and see. And that could be articles, that could be blog posts, there could be a lot of different ways and you're kind of got to look at that and monitor that for sure. But review marketing is really understanding how online reviews is actually impacting your business right now and how it's impacting someone who's calling or about to call or wants to call you, but needs to know if they can trust you or not. And 
if outside of any other reason, the only way they have to verify that is online reviews. So how can I take and systemize this process of uh, creating more reviews, growing my reviews, monitoring my reviews, and promoting those reviews as a part of what I do as a business in order to help me gain more customers in the future? So we're going to talk about a lot of aspects of that. Okay, that went the wrong way. Let's go this way. There we go. So do people use online reviews? I, if I could have everybody with a show of hands, I can't see you, but raise your hands. If you use online reviews, do you ever search and look online for online reviews? I guarantee you, absolutely you do. Uh, we see this in the data for local business or other things. People are looking at online reviews before making buying decisions. This is an important stat. Eight and 10 consumers trust an online review as much as a personal recommendation. So think about this. You ask a friend or your neighbor, hey, I'm looking for a new doctor, a new dentist, a new attorney. I, I have a serious situation. I recommend this person. Great. You trust that recommendation and you'll run out and use that person. Guess what? An online review that says something positive about your business has the same level of trust as that. Eight out of 10 times. That's significant. Very significant when you really think about how much people trust online reviews. So I have a formula. I like to create formulas uh, and patterns. I love Greg's four P's. That's amazing. So I call it RFP when we're talking about reviews. Recency, frequency, and proximity Q squared, which is quality and quantity. All right. Recency, frequency, proximity. What's that mean? So let me tell you a story. Let's say I invite a nice young lady out for dinner. And it's our first date. Very first time we've gone on a date. We're sitting there, we're getting to know each other. By the end of that date, I confess my undying love for this young lady. And I ask her to marry me. Now, I don't know if the chat's working or not. What do you think the answer is going to be? Is it going to be yes or going to be no? I mean, it's probably no. And if it is, yes, you know, I mean, one crazy that I'm asking Two, if she says yes, after that first date, then maybe she's the crazy one. I don't know. So Mike, he got turned down. Yeah, no kidding. So while it was recent, it just happened. Like I just told her I loved her. It had not been frequent. There was no frequency to it happening. And so if you don't have both things, you can't create proximity. There's no closeness. There's no getting to the next step. There's no moving forward uh, with that. So how do we actually see this working in online reviews? So in one particular way, uh, we see this when we talk about your Google business profile. So your Google business profile, you know, is that profile, it has your business name, address, phone number, has your basic services, what you offer, and it has your Google reviews are all right there. So when someone's looking at Google business profile and uh, doing this research that local search guides did, our local SEO guides did, here's the things that they noticed, all right? Eight key things that made the determination of which Google business profile showed up in that search result. So number one was distance from search of center of search. So how far away the person was to the business searching. Number one, most important ranking factor. The second most important ranking factor is additional organic ranking. So like Greg was just talking about with uh, how you're gonna rank for a particular keyword in a search result and the links to your website, how your website set up, all those things. So those are the two things, distance from, from search, 
and organic rankings. The remaining six all have to do with the reviews in your Google business profile, all related to reviews. Number of reviews that have that keyword that they search for. So how many of the reviews that you have have that particular keyword? How many uh, profiles actually have less than zero reviews? Sometimes we're like, well, I'm not even going to play in this. I'm not going to participate. Guess what? You have zero reviews. Google's ignoring you. They're just going to not even try to make you show up at all. Number five, percentage of reviews with the keyword. So number of reviews and percentage. So the total number plus of your overall reviews, what percentage of those reviews had that keyword? Very important. Number six, number of views not responded to. So if you don't know this, this is knowledge, knowledge bomb right now. Respond to all your Google reviews. Respond to every single one of them. Google wants you to do that. And if you don't respond, you actually are getting penalized by not responding. Number seven, the average yearly reviews. So here we get into this proximity piece, quantity and quality, quantity average yearly reviews how many reviews do you get every single year so when you say i've got 50 reviews i've got 10 reviews is that enough well not if google's looking at how many you get on average every year that means you got to keep working you got to keep going you can't stop and then lastly number eight is number of reviews with likes so this is reviews that people can actually give a little upvote to okay there's a little thumbs up thumbs down on those google reviews so actually having really good meaningful reviews that get liked are an important factor as well so you can see out of all these things in your google, google business profile the reviews are driving the vast majority of the overall results so recency matters frequency matters to create proximity you need quality and quantity so let's talk a little bit more about quality so we work with a lot of senior care communities this is what we would call a quality review why well there's several things in here that are important um, they're talking about how their loved one has been here for all this certain amount of time they chose this facility why did they choose that facility well it's close to my home Okay, there was close proximity. And here's what I found. They had great activities, great staff, great meals. Okay, those are all search terms that someone might use when looking for an assisted living, assisted living activities, assisted living staff, assisted living meals. That is a high quality review. So we have to sometimes coach our customers in how to review us as well so why do you need a plan for how to manage your reviews here's the deal a couple of reasons one good reviews are waiting to happen while 90 percent of people read reviews only six percent actually write them very few people are actually taking time to write reviews that means there's a lot of pent up demand. Like you have probably a lot of your customers that are, would be more than happy to write you a review, but there's some things that you have to do that. I'm gonna to talk to you about this two steps that you have to take in order to get more reviews. Here's another reason why you need to do this. Reviewers are highly motivated by, motivated by emotion. And what happens is if I had a generally good experience, I'm not necessarily super motivated to go run out and write a review. Now, if it's an exceptional experience, I probably would. But if I'm not happy, I'm angry and I am super motivated and I can't wait to go write a negative review. So if all we do is, is just do nothing and we don't do anything to try to get good reviews, we're going to wind up just having negative reviews and just being in reactionary mode and reacting to when we get a negative review. <clears throat> so 
So how do you get more reviews? Two things. Number one, you have to ask for reviews. You have to ask for them. And then secondly, you have to make it easy. You have to provide some tools and some ways to help uh, your customers leave your review, provide them with an easy link and provide them with reminders. We found that it usually takes three, four, maybe five times of asking before someone will actually go and write a review. Those are the only two things you have to do. Now, is it okay to ask for reviews? Well, according to Google, it's fine. We'll talk a little bit about FTC rules here in a minute. According to the FTC, it's fine to ask for reviews. Even the FTC says fine to offer incentives for people to leave a review. Now, the key is if you're offering an incentive for a review, you can't incentivize good or bad, right? You can't say, I will give you this incentive if you write a good review. But you can incentivize based on the law of the land, even if Yelp doesn't agree with it and Yelp can set their own rules, but based on the law of the land, you can incentivize people to leave your review. You just can't say, I'll only give this to you if you write me a good review, which we would want to say, but according to FTC, totally fine. So the real question is, if we're talking about uh, really focusing on reviews, is what's the value of that individual review? Like, how do we come up with this number? So there's a couple of ways you could think about this. Um, if someone sends you a referral, for a new client, a new customer, what's that typically worth? So is it worth, you know, a hundred dollars because they bought something? Is it worth $10,000? Um, you know, is it worth, uh, you know, uh, what's the lifetime value of that customer? Maybe they're going to be a repeat customer of your service for the next three years, two years. Uh, so maybe their value is $200,000. So if a review can work like a referral would, and someone could read one of your fantastic reviews and go, I want to do business with these people. What's the value of that review? Is it 10,000, 50,000, a hundred thousand dollars, the actual value of that positive uh, review that you've been able to collect. So my point is it's worth spending time to systemize and make a process for how you're gonna collect and ask for more reviews. So I mentioned a little bit about some regulations. Um, it's actually become more and more regulated by the FTC and there are very specific uh, rules and laws and I can share this presentation with you if you just go uh, Google FTC um, reviews and uh, testimonials, um, you'll see all the regulations behind it and how, uh, how you can do, um, how you need to be using them. So there, you know, FTC wants you to be open and honest and transparent with your reviews and testimonials. Uh, to the point where they want you, if you're going to show on your website good testimonials and reviews, they want you to show the bad ones too. Now, I don't know if I would go that far myself personally, but that's what they that's what they're asking uh, businesses businesses to do uh, in in that. So if you want to be sure, is this okay or not okay? If you want to check anything that I've said, check that out on the FTC regulations. Uh, but FTC wants you to ask for reviews. They want you to get more reviews, but they don't want you to game the system. They don't want you to cheat the system. They want you to have full transparency around that. And that might mean you need to have a policy on your website that says, you know, we, we allow these types of reviews. And if a review comes in and it's one star and it has no comment on it, well, we don't put that review on our website because that doesn't fit within our terms of service because we have no way to respond to that review or what anything we can do with that review. 
because we don't even know what it's about. And you can create those policies around that. So we're talking a lot about e-commerce here and the customer experience uh, as well. And so there's the business reviews that you're going to get on Google and other places to review your business. But the other piece that's really important is the product reviews. So if you're doing an e-commerce store, you also want to be collecting reviews around those products. I, my first experience with online reviews was years ago when I started buying and selling stuff on eBay. And we're talking many, many years ago, buying and selling stuff on eBay. And if I sold something, I got reviewed. But if I bought something, I also got reviewed. So usually buyers aren't getting reviews. I think that's a good idea. We should probably do that on some more sites, review the buyers. Uh, but those, those individual product reviews are critically important on an e-commerce store. And so if you wanna build up that reputation of an individual product, you not only need reviews about your business, but you need to get those reviews for your product as well. And again, you gotta ask them. All right, so I'm gonna do a giveaway as well, just a free consultation to take a look at your online reviews and uh, run a free report from you. I'm gonna give you one of Greg's books, Monetize Your Expertise, awesome book, which I have read. Uh, I've read all of Greg's books and uh, that. So you'll get a copy of that um, to schedule that with me. Just send me an email, Peter at DM Dude. Let me know you want to get three reviews report. And uh, I'll ask you a few questions and we'll organize that and put some things together. I'm looking at the Facebook feed online. There's looks like there's a few people on there right now uh, as well. And oh, close with this, closing thoughts. So why this picture? So when I was a kid, I was probably, I don't know, eight, nine years old. And my dad had a job in downtown Denver. He's a computer programmer, okay? Apple doesn't fall far from the tree, I guess. He's a computer programmer, downtown Denver. It's a Saturday morning. We go downtown and I'd never been in downtown Denver before. I can remember, I mean, I lived in Brighton. I could see all the tall buildings, but I didn't realize the scale and the size of how big those buildings were. And when we, we, we were walking from the car and my dad's walking really fast, I'm doing everything I can to keep up. And I remember my dad reaching down and grabbing my hand to kind of pull me along uh, with him as we're walking into the building. And I'm looking around, I'm just so amazed. It's such a strange place. I'd never been there before. But when he grabbed my hand, I felt safe. I felt confident. So my goal with online reviews and coaching you and helping you with your online reviews is that, you know what? Let's help your customers take that next step. Let's give them a, a little sense of trust and safety that says, you know, this is a reliable business. I need to talk to them. I need to take that next step. Because of recency, frequency, and the proximity, we're able to help uh, your clients take the next step. And this is really important. This is a real sign that I took a picture of. If I'm going to use a vacuum at a car wash, I want to know that it really sucks. I think that's super important. All right, that's my piece. That's that's hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, just to follow up on what Peter said here, if you guys got some value out of this today, if you think that this is uh, good quality content instead of the usual fluff that you see in webinars, uh, go give Peter a review on his website. Go give me a review on my website. Yes, please. Uh, it, it, it'll help a lot. And I, I, I want to thank Peter for being here and sharing that incredible information today. I, I learned some things uh, that I didn't know. And I, I try to keep up on this stuff. So that, that was great. Uh, I learned some stuff too, Greg. So that was, that was great. Great content. Lot, there's so many nuggets there. And uh, yeah, if we can do anything to help you guys reach out to either one of us. Yep. So 
Take advantage of Peter's offer. Take advantage of my offer. We're here to help you guys. If there are any questions, uh, I know that there were people earlier saying they couldn't uh, put things in the chat. Uh, try that again. Uh, try going to the Q&A section. Of, uh, there's that as well as uh, the chat area. Uh, if neither of those things work and you do have uh, any questions, uh, the best thing to do is to uh, book one of those strategy sessions with myself and or Peter and we'll get your questions answered. Yep. All right, uh, this was being recorded. Uh, if people were not able to stay for the entire time, uh, the recording will be available for you to go back and review it. Uh, or for people that um, maybe signed up uh, specifically knowing they couldn't get here. And with that, I think we're going to wrap it up.